Hey everybody, it's Mr. Ray. Today we're going to talk more about the physics of music, specifically the science behind musical instruments and how they work. So what is sound? If you've watched my videos before, you know there's a word I'm looking for. It starts with a V. That's right, it's a vibration. So all sound is vibration. Anything, any sound you hear is caused by some sort of vibration. So think of some musical instruments you know. Um, think of through the musical instrument families. You got woodwinds, brass, strings, percussion. Think through some of those. How do they vibrate? So I'm gonna demonstrate a few. I've got several with me. Um, I'm gonna start with the woodwinds. They're called woodwinds because they use a little piece of wood called a reed. A reed is just a really thin piece of wood and when you attach it to the pipe that you're blowing through, you blow across it and it vibrates up and down very quickly. So when you put it on an instrument, it looks like this. Then you can blow through this mouthpiece through this tube down into the horn and out the bell, and all those vibrations of air go through the horn and out into your eardrums. A clarinet is also a woodwind, so it uses a reed, but it's a lot smaller than a saxophone reed. So you blow through it and you change how long the clarinet is by how many holes you have covered. If you have them all covered, then the air goes all the way through the horn and out and it goes, it vibrates the air into your eardrums. So they're called woodwinds, obviously, because they use a little piece of wood and wind to make the instrument sound. But there's another instrument that's in the woodwind family that does not use a piece of wood. Do you know what I'm talking about? Flute. So a flute is a member of the woodwind family, but it does not have any wood on it. So the sounds on a flute are created when you blow across this hole in the pipe and the air gets pushed around in circles and through the pipe and the air hitting each other is what you hear. The You've heard that when air goes through a tiny little crack in the doorway on a windy night uh, that it sounds like a ghost. That's basically the same thing this does. All you're hearing is the air molecules hitting each other. So that's enough of the woodwind family. Let's talk about the brass instruments. Does anyone know what on a brass instrument vibrates to make the sound? That's right, it's your lips. On a brass instrument, you don't just blow into the tube, you have to buzz your lips. So it's kind of like a spitting, like if a, a bug landed on your lips and you're like Pfft. That's what you do. <laughs> Trumpet is probably the most popular brass instrument. It's uh, probably the loudest, and it uses a mouthpiece that looks like this. And you do that buzzing sound into the mouthpiece. And then when you put it through the horn, it goes through all of this piping and out. On all brass instruments, there are several notes you can play with one fingering. So let's just put a, this first valve down with our index finger and see how many notes I can play with it. So the higher the note, the faster you have to buzz with your lips, so the tighter you need to get with your lips. So brass instruments are pretty hard because there's a lot you can change with your lips. Not, it's not just your fingers. In woodwinds, you just blow, and it's mainly your fingers. There's a little bit to do with your mouth and embouchure, but it's not as hard as buzzing your lips as a, as a brass instrument. French horn is also a brass instrument. It's kind of like a trumpet that's a lot longer, but that's been wrapped up into circular tubing. A trombone is also a member of the brass family. It's a member of what we call low brass. Low brass has a bigger mouthpiece, and instead of a really tight buzz, you do a looser buzz, like 
Baritone or euphonium is also a member of the low brass family. It's got the same size of mouthpiece as is on a trombone, and uh, it's basically a miniature tuba. <laughs> So now we've covered the brass instruments and the woodwind instruments. We know what vibrates on them, so how they make sound. Now let's move on to stringed instruments. A guitar, of course, is a stringed instrument. It's got six strings, and it's pretty easy to see what vibrates on a guitar. You pluck the string, and it vibrates back and forth. Percussion instruments also produce a vibration, and it's usually by hitting things. These two pieces of wood hitting each other just causes the other piece of wood to vibrate. So how does the sound actually get from these vibrating sticks into our ears? Imagine all of the invisible air molecules that are around you right now. They're tiny, you cannot see them. So it's kind of like this really fine mist of water. We can see water droplets, but they hang in the air, but they're so small we can't see it. So what you're doing, once you cause something to vibrate, it starts moving and then it moves the air around it, and every time it goes up and down, it causes a bunch of air molecules to go up and down. And those air molecules push into the air molecules next to them, and so forth, so on and so forth, so on and so forth, until the air next to your ear is vibrated, and then it goes into your ear, into your eardrum, and your eardrum vibrates, and that's connected to the auditory nerves that go into your brain, and your brain processes the sound. Now there are scientific measurements we can take of musical instruments. There's frequency, which means how fast is the sound wave vibrating up and down in a matter of a second. Is it 10 times per second? Is it 10,000 times in a second? They look different. A sound wave that, that beats up and down 10 times a second is, is a big wave. Whereas a sound that beats 10,000 times in a second is a really small wave. They're close together. So smaller waves make a higher sound. Those are all small waves. Bigger, longer waves make low sounds. Some dogs can hear sounds that are above our hearing range, like the tss, but even higher. And some animals like whales and elephants communicate using low, really low, long sound waves that we can't even hear. We can sometimes feel if they're strong enough, but our ears cannot detect them. The human ear can detect vibrations of sound between 20 times a second and 20,000 times a second. The measurement we use for this is called Hertz. Hertz measures how many times does something vibrate in one second. So this note right here is a B on a clarinet, and it vibrates 440 times a second. This note is a high B on clarinet, and it vibrates at 880 times a second. Do you notice a relationship between the numbers 440 and 880? That's right, 880 is exactly twice as much. So when we play notes on an instrument that are called the same letter, a B, a high B, a higher B, those are all exactly twice the frequency of the one below it. If this one's 440, then this one's 880. Another measurement we can take of sound waves and musical instruments is amplitude. Amplitude means how big is the sound wave? How big is the difference between the crest, which is the top of the wave, and the trough, which is the bottom of the wave? So if it's only a small amount of distance, that translates to us as basically a, a weaker signal, so like a smaller volume. And if it's a, a higher wave, a bigger amplitude, that's gonna be a, a, a higher volume to us. So all sound boils down to is vibration. And all of these musical instruments we've talked about today, they've had one thing in common, and that's vibration. They just vibrate in different ways. So I think it's really fun to learn about sound waves. Usually we don't give them much thought because they're invisible, we can't see them, we don't pay any mind to them. But when we think of how they're actually created and the molecules of air that hit each other in sequences and all the way to our ears, and all of the sounds that are bombarding us with sound waves all the time of the day, I think it's pretty cool to explore the science behind that. Now go explain to somebody some of the knowledge you just learned about sound waves. They'll love it. Thanks for watching, y'all go practice.